Hewitt, an offer of a quarter of a million dollars is a hell of a lot of money for an untried product. I didn't invent Cestrine just to sell out. This new fabric of mine is going to keep me comfortably in millions for the rest of my spending life. Sure, if you can get the backing to set it up. A new synthetic fiber as good as this one's a world beater. I've asked for government aid, and I think I'll get it. You don't seem to realize the size of the syndicate I represent and the amount of money behind it. We intend to get Cestrine, and we will. At any price. I'm sorry, Joe, but these delightful American sales methods don't work with me. On this side of the Atlantic, we're not intimidated by cheap threats. Fascinating things. Have you noticed how the larger fish gang up on a small one, crowd it into a corner and kind of nibble it to death? Rather like our own business, isn't it? I'll be around again, Hewitt, with my bait. Let's hope you'll be sensible and rise to it. I time it correctly? Perfectly. He's just gone. Good. Oh, dear. That looks much too bulky. Uh, it's your turn to read. Mm. Yes. It's very complete. Even to his taste in socks. What, good? Yes. Rather adventurous. Does it contain a sample of that revolutionary new fibre he helps to market? No. Nope. But you said it was complete. Well, the formulae there? Yes. Is that enough to go on? I mean, is that enough for us to recommend this million-pound loan he's asking for? I don't know, but you relish people. You read all about Hewitt. I shall go through his formulae and we can do a joint report to Sir Geoffrey later. But that's unfair. It was your turn to read. Now I've got the bulk. Ah, Hewitt claims that his new fibre cestrine is heat-proof, ultra-light, of enormous tensile strength, porous, did da 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 There's everything except the washing up. Hmm, all the usual attributes of a self-made man. What? Hewitt. I was talking about Cestrine. I'm aware of that, but the man and his discovery are related, are they not? I see he keeps an expensive wife in Buckinghamshire, yet has refused high salaried posts with, amongst others, amalgamated chemicals. Perhaps they'd like to uh, exploit this new fibre. If it's as cheap to produce as he says it is. But amalgamated are about to introduce a new one of their own, aren't they? Hmm. Perhaps Hewitt's is better. You know, I didn't like the sound of Hewitt. Brilliant, assertive, hot-headed, difficult. Well, I'm sure you'll recommend him for a loan. Oh, I'd love to, but I fear our grey man over the way would turn puce with terror. Now, I shall need your expert opinion on this new process, but first I must verify his stability, personal stability. Good afternoon, dear lady. Good afternoon, sir. Amalgamated chemicals are about to launch a new fabric. Would you kindly discover how they are about to publicise it? Of course, sir. Thank you. The usual party, I expect, a 21 champagne cork salute. Probably. Aimed accurately at a posse of PROs. And Hewitt. Fancy. Uh, not for long, I take it. Why was that? Amalgamated chemicals. A country club do. I thought Sir Hugh loathed you. Oh, one always invites the enemy to the feast. Admit too. Isn't that sweet? Very delicate, in case you want to take a mistress instead of a wife, I suppose. And the kids in bed? Of course. And asleep. Actually, I, I have a better idea. Such as? Well, well, look, Kate. 
Why don't we drop all this nonsense? You know, my nights out, your welfare meetings. Let's have dinner together, go to this reception. You know, revive a few old customs. I take it she stood you up? Who? Oh, come on, darling. Or is she off you already? Miss Lee, your clever little designing lady. Or doesn't the arrangement cover crying on her shoulders? You're not getting value for money. I was just trying to tell you what I'd really prefer to be doing, given half a chance. That's a sweet thought. To want to come creeping out of her charming little boudoir straight back into mine. Or are you on an economy campaign? You don't want to know, do you? You just don't give a damn what our marriage has come to, or who I take up with. Just so long as it all takes place well away from your front door. You know, Alec, I'm so tired of you, I don't know why I bother to talk to you. You're like a small, mentally retarded schoolboy. Why don't you go back to your chemistry Okay, set? darling, okay, you can relax. The danger of having to be a wife is past. I shan't try again. You make me sick. Try again. You never even started. But I warn you, Alec, things can't go on like this. Even I've had enough. How are the sums going? Progressing. Hewitt's initial calculations are quite sound, but he had a rather oblique approach. How's his private life? Somewhat more straightforward. Apart from his... Uh, he certainly lives. <laughs> Apart from his hyper-social wife in Buckinghamshire... You make her sound like a limerick. There was a young lady in Buckingham. I don't think you ought to pursue that, uh, Donald. Ah, I was right. Amalgamated arguing a party at a country club in Sunningdale. A fashion show to promote their new man-made fibre, and Hewitt is invited. Ah. Would a young textile designer, Miss Moira Lee, be among the guests? Moira, Moira... Uh, yes, why? How convenient. Miss Lee, if I read our coy research ladies correctly, is Hewitt's mistress. Or should I say bird? Oh, Moira, shall I call thee bird, or but a wandering vice? Very pretty, Dimmock. Moreover, she has tastes as expensive as the materials she designs. Now, I give you mustard at my desk. Will you kindly not shower ash all over it? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I wonder how far Amalgamated are prepared to go to get Hewitt. I think I would rather they finance the new fibre than the taxpayer. Ah, very public spirited of you. If somebody went to the party, they could find out about Amalgamated's intentions, couldn't they? Yes, preferably somebody who knows Hewitt. Well, it's that chemical consultant. He's a friend of the family. What's his name? Oh, you remember. Uh, Marcus Oliver. Oh, yes, I remember. Well, no one else qualifies. No? No. Oh, very well. Oliver, it'll have to be. Yeah, you'll do his best. Some people's best is never good enough, Dimmock. If only he didn't think with his mouth full. <laughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you know, Sir Hugh, I... I um... I think my group might be very interested in exploiting your synthetic. Yes, there's plenty of time yet, you know. We mustn't rush it. Well, Thank you. give it a thought. Give it a thought. Yes, I will. <laughs> well, if that's what you want, Moira, darling, that's what you want. Miss Lee, how are you? Amalgamated Chemicals New Fabric. It's soft and beautiful. And how right that someone like you should be wearing it. Miss Lee is a rose amid chemical form. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oliver. There you are, darling. Didn't I tell you how stunning you look? It's really such a frightful gimmick. But the chairman thought as I'd designed the material, I should wear it for the reception. I've never been fondled so much in public before. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Isn't that rather heavy for you? Thank you. I do so enjoy these little get-togethers. All the best things in life at once. Food and friends. Oh, I'm sorry, will you? No, thank you. Ah, my dear Hewitt. How very good of you to come along. Oh, good evening, Sir Hugh. There's quite a send-off for this new stuff of yours. Yes, yeah, waste of money, really, you know, but it's expected of us. Well, now, tell me, how's your own project getting along? I can't rush it, you know. Ah, uh, really, you know, that's tantamount to saying that you're stuck. <laughs> but if you believe that, why is Amalgamated Chemicals lobbying to block my government grant? You know, my boy, if you want to play in the big league, you'll have to do something better than to grumble when you're sat on. Yes, well, perhaps you're right, sir. Uh, will you excuse me? Yes, yes, of course. 
Splendid reception, Sir Hugh. Absolutely splendid. Food's well above average for this kind of fare. Mm, I'm very glad you enjoy it, uh, Mr. Oliver. Marcus Oliver. Well, what price is Amalgamated Chemicals going to offer you to join them? You know, Mr. Doom, your mind's too one track. Over here, it's quite customary to invite the opposition to share in one's success. And you reckon you rate as the opposition? <laughs> You're kidding yourself. Now, be sensible. Our offer could make things very comfortable for you. We might even be persuaded to uh, take you on the payroll. <laughs> you know, I find this very amusing. But just a trifle tiresome. In about three years' time, I shall be able to buy you out. You it. <laughs> Little fish don't eat the big ones. It's the other way around. Remember? How good to see you here, Hewitt. Tis Hewitt, isn't it? Yes, good. Now, do you know Marcus Oliver? He's in your line of country, isn't he? Hey, Marcus. It's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Oh, and of course, you two know each other, don't you? Or should one venture, did know each other. Hello, Alec. I was hoping you'd be here this evening. I didn't realize you knew Wally. I don't. You two seem to know each other very well, though. Yes, we're hoping the happy day's not too far off, aren't we, darling? Don't let's go into all that now, Wally. Excuse me, I think I'm in the way. No, don't go. We've nothing to hide. Have we, darling? Wally! Don't you think she's looking lovely this evening, Hewitt? Aren't I the lucky one? Yes, indeed, you're looking very well, Maura. Perhaps we might have a word together later oh, on. Oh, how sad. We're not staying. We must go. We've been invited to another do in town. Still, you'll have your friend to console you, won't you? Hadn't you better get your wrap, darling? Nice to have met you, Mr. Oliver. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You're, you're looking tired, Alec. Have a canopy or a stuff something or other. Does the system good to keep the jaws moving? That's why those nut-chewing natives keep so well. Yes, yes, I'm sure you're right, Marcus. How's Catherine? Still as social as ever? And the children? They must be growing apace yes, now. Yes, yes, indeed. Now, look, Alec, you must tell me all about this new process of yours. Yes, yes, of course, but um, later, perhaps. At least I was polite. I can't uh, understand Why what you could possibly wait. expect me to. You can't just go like this. Alec, I was going to telephone Shoot. you. I... Haven't you got the message? What yet? message, Mr. Uh... That this little extramarital romp of yours is over, and you better get back to your wife. For God's sake, keep out of this, Wally. Then tell him. There's no room for two of us. If you won't get him out of your life and out of my way, then I will. Will you please go? Okay, I'll go and fetch the car round. Make it brief, Hewitt. Now, there's a good old-fashioned type. Oh, I could kill him. You'd be much better off ignoring him. I can't do that. I see. That's what I wanted to tell you. Only he's done it for you. Look, Alec, you and I had to finish sometime. Well, it couldn't work out for us, could it? No, no, I suppose not. But are you sure about him? I mean, is, is he what you really want? Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I really know what I do want. But at least he's not... Huh, not married. Yes, all right, I, I do understand. Oh, look, Moira, um, I never intended this to be a goodbye present. Oh, Alec, don't make it more difficult. I don't want a present. Oh, no, 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 it's just the money that I had to get that silly little car that you wanted so badly. I'm sorry it's all in cash, but uh, it makes it easier with the tax people. Oh, look, I can't. Oh, no, don't be silly. It's the least I can do. Well, look, Moira, if you should ever change your mind, or if you should ever need any help... No, I Alec. Think. I mean to make quite sure that this is the last time we shall ever meet. Ready, Moira? <laughs> May I? Oh, do, do. Quite a clam bake. I beg your pardon? My name's Drew, John Drew. Yes, yes. Drew? Are you one of the uh, American Drews? The salmon Drews? I, I beg your pardon. You know that delightful canned salmon firm. Quite the most delicious tin fish. Not mind you that I approve of tin fish, but needs must at times, I'm sad to say. No, and I'm afraid I'm not one of those Drews. Pity. I saw you talking with Alec Hewitt a few moments ago. 
I wonder if he mentioned uh, anything about his future plans regarding Sestri. Why, are you interested? I wondered if he'd uh, left the party or had I missed him. Or Gone to take the air with the lights, Miss Lee, I think. Such a talented young chemist he was. But I did always feel that biochemistry was more his line than industrial. Uh, uh, Elsie. Ramola. Sir. Uh, sorry, Ramola. Tell me, my dear, how well do you know the catering manager here? Well, sir, I keep telling people we're only friends just because his estate car is a seat that lets down. <laughs> no, you quite misunderstand me. I had just wondered, not that it matters, of course, if there might be a little of that lobster left that we had earlier. Oh, well, I could see for you, sir. Bless you, child. And if it's not too inconvenient, could you pop it into something portable? Portable, sir. To take home. Oh, yes. A whole lobster, if you manage it. So good for late supper with a Rhine wine. Don't you agree, Mr. Salmon? <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. I hope the shock hasn't taken away your appetite. Hewitt has been murdered. Oh? Shot. Then obviously he won't be able to continue with his experiments. So there's no need for us to investigate him professionally. Or privately. We shall have to close the files. Pity. I was looking forward to some chemistry. Why, Chi? Have you no heart, Dimmock? Oh, yes, but only for personal use. But let us at least spare the thought for poor Marcus Oliver. No more beluga caviar. No more putty or croute. No more lobster thermidor. No more high living at the taxpayer's expense. Oh, you have to exist on potato crisps, won't you? And while the Buckinghamshire constabulary will live not far, yes. Oh, dear. I suppose we'd better brace ourselves for a session with Norton. Well, what's he coming for? Thank us for our... Cooperation, I shouldn't wonder. Cheers. Bert. Try and get your chaps out of here as soon as possible, will you? Inspector Bascom wants us out of the place by midday. Right? Come on, you two. Get those chalk marks up. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, there you are, Sergeant. Sir. You know, this reads like a cross between a hunt ball and the director's directory. You're sure all the names are on this list? Oh, sure. With that diamond study lot, are we going to be allowed to handle this one ourselves, or has the chief been onto Scotland Yard again? McCall, this is not on their beat. Oh, and no. they have no monopoly on murder, all the people to handle it. Yes. Now, but... what else have we got to help us on our way? Well, there's a hand mark on the balustrade of the pool. Mm. Fairly fresh one, that. Some scratch marks beside it. We've got all the usual pictures. Good. Now, from what I can gather from your execrable handwriting, it would seem that the two people who interest us most are Mr. Massey and Miss Lee. Such theatrical names. Hmm. However, to check through all the others would not come amiss. Oh, thanks very much. Can't wait to check through 149 industrial chemists. A hand mark, you say? Them again? A palm print on the balustrade. Oh, yeah, that's right. And um, some clothing fibers as well. Do you want the yard lab to check them? Why not? We can safely leave them to do that, I think. <laughs> uh, you'd better not forget to check the bullet. Right. And the range. Yes, sir. Well, I think that's all that can be usefully accomplished here. It's time we did a little visiting. Let's take Mr. Massey first. Call the car, Sergeant. I'm sorry, Norton, but nothing you've said has convinced me that we should play a further part. What remains is routine stuff for the county police. On the contrary, gentlemen, you were called in to investigate Hewitt. The government believed his work might be important enough to deserve support. If a major industrial cartel is behind all this, it's vitally important that we know. Uh, we've already eliminated that possibility, haven't we, Demac? Some further research into Hewitt's process might be fun, uh, useful. Whatever for? To see whether it was worth murdering him for. And how do you propose to go about this? By carrying out a few simple experiments. In here? Of course. I would not have this place turned into a chemical laboratory. No stinks in here, please. The moment a Bunsen burner moves in, I move out. I've discovered an interesting fact, Sir Jeffrey, about the formulae Hewitt supplied the government. They are incomplete. 
Yeah. Well, here, for example, he writes C additional calculations on Appendix 27. You haven't got Appendix 27? No. And then he refers to personal notes and something he wrote on the back of an envelope. He must have made additional calculations after he applied to the government for his loan. Well, they must be somewhere, even if they're not in his office. Exactly. Probably at his home. Oh, right. Well, I'll send one of our cards. Oh, no, no. I think that might scare Mrs. Hewitt. Uh, get me Marcus Oliver, please. He's one of our very best men. Oh. Am I to assume, Admiral Shaw, that you are... You uh, seriously intend to proceed with this chemistry lesson? I think it might teach us a great deal. Poppycock, with my more conventional methods, I could discover more about the nature of this murder in half the time. Uh, what's more, to prove it, I will. You'll be uh, needing the evidence then, huh? Yes, thank you. Oh. Yeah, I think I know which of you will come up with the answer first. Eh, Jimmy? Oh. Yes? Uh, Marcus? Dimmock, I want you to go round and talk to Hewitt's widow. No, I'm not interested in her, but find out if he ever brought any work home. If he did, bring what you find there to us immediately. It's very important. What? What's that? No, I, I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, when you've finished your tea. Gesundheit. It's very hard to talk to a chap when he's got his mouth stuffed with Dundee cake. Now, in a way, his death was a relief. You're glad he's dead? Oh, no. No, I didn't say that. I wouldn't wish him that much harm. You, you don't stay married to someone for ten years and suddenly want them dead. It's a sort of slower running down. We just reached the negative stage. Do you know, I believe he went to that party last night just to get away from me. Oh, surely things weren't quite as bad as that. We meant less to each other than strangers. One can't keep up polite social conversation all one's life. My dear Catherine, you should have built up your outside interests. Joined a few good societies. The food and wine, for example. <laughs> it's a very poor substitute, Mark. You think so? Anyway, I did go out quite a lot. You have to put on some kind of show. Well, you did it very well. I'd never have guessed you and Alec weren't perfectly happy. You were out last night, weren't you? Who told you that? No, something you said. No, no, I wasn't out last night. I spent the whole evening here watching television. I, I was still here when the police arrived. I see. Why should I have gone out? Well, if you were lonely, wanted company. It's very sweet of you to be so concerned. Well, I wondered if there was anything I could do. You know, help out in any way. No, no, not yet. Alec appears to have left everything in the most terrible muddle, but... There'll be plenty to do eventually. Oh, shall I? No, no, I'll take it in the study. Excuse me. Oh, you, you can send us a cheque. That'll be perfectly in order, yeah? Uh, we collected the car from where you said and picked up the keys from the house opposite, and it's ready now. Will you call for it, or shall I bring it round? Oh, well, I... Well, send it round, will you please? A little later this afternoon. What was the trouble? Oh, his petrol pump failure. Sorry he couldn't raise this last night. We don't have a night oh, service, is he? Well, anyway, thank you. Isn't it strange how many people seem to delight in ringing up to sympathize? Oh, well, they mean well. Um, Catherine, if you're not too busy, my dear, this tummy of mine. What's wrong with it? Nothing. I just like to keep it filled. Oh, oh I'm terribly sorry. How rude of me. Well, well, you just nibble away. I'll get things started. Thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Good day. Would this be Miss Lee's flat? I'm not buying anything today. Mr. Massey, you may, as they say, have already bought it. It is Mr. Massey, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Who are you? A police officer, sir. We didn't expect you here. We've, uh, we've had quite a job finding you. So what? If you dropped me a card, I'd have stayed at home. You didn't expect us? 
Well, why should I expect you? What's all the fun and games? Enjoy yourself at the party. Which one? Amalgamated chemicals. Ugh, a drag. Scrape the bottom of the barrel. Does that make you happy? We want to talk to you about Alec Hewitt's death. Hewitt's death? Don't you feel we'd be more comfortable inside? It does so lower the tone of the place to have policemen question you on the doorstep, don't you think? Look, you've no right to come in here. Now that you've so kindly invited us in, perhaps Miss Lee would spare us a few moments for a chat. Miss Lee isn't here. She's gone to work. She does work for a living, you know. Unlike some of us, eh, Mr. Massey? McCall. Now, just a moment. You've absolutely no right to come stampeding in here like... Look! Uh, this small intrusion could look somewhat pale beside murder, couldn't it? Murder? You mean Hewitt? Alec Hewitt's been murdered? She's not in here. I won't tolerate this. Is that your car I... outside, sir? A white GT model? Yes, and I assure you, adequately taxed and insured. I'm very sorry, sir. It seems to be causing obstruction. Uh, I wonder if I can see your driving license. This is ludicrous. Driving license, sir? Very well. I think you'll find that complies with the law. That's uh, rather a lot of money, sir. You may think so. What do you do for a living, Mr. Massey? I don't see that that's any affair of yours. It's merely a matter of establishing means of support. Means of support? Yes, Mr. Massey. Just how do you come to be in possession of such a large sum? Do you, in fact, know how much there is there? 450 pounds. And you said your business was... I'm an interior design consultant, if you know what that means. I have a shrewd idea. We come across all sorts, Mr. Massey. And you can account for this money. Look, I've told you, this is peanuts. I leave this kind of cash under plates. Can you tell us where it came from? The client. Cash settlement. So it would seem. Name of the client? I'm not answering any more questions. My solicitor will put you... Will very... he now? Suppose you slip out of your working clothes and into something more suitable and come with us. We could do with some advice on interior design down at headquarters, couldn't we, McCall? Oh, definitely, sir. The Buckinghamshire police are making progress. They've taken Walter Massey in for questioning. Very diligent of them, why? He had 450 pounds on him. He claims it came from Miss Lee. Don't think it's very likely, do you? I agree, but I don't think you have the right man. 450 pounds is a reasonably large sum. Uh, not, I think, for the secrets of a revolutionary new process. I suggest you have him released. We we'll get as much out of him as possible before doing so. It could be useful. Oh, <laughs> glad to see you are on the job, dear. Get any results? Yeah, uh, uh, top secret, eh? Yeah? Oh, <laughs> splendid. Splendid. Uh, he's a clever fellow, Derek. Turn his hand to anything. Think so? You know Hewitt found a new Ziegler catalyst? Did he indeed? Now, the introduction of aluminium alkyl and the temperature Are those the notes of Oliver Fat? What? Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much. Demick, you know that Oliver told us that uh, Mrs. Hewitt said she stayed in on the night of the murder. Yes, don't interrupt. I've got to keep this going at a constant temperature. Our research ladies have discovered that uh, she was picked up about half a mile from that country club 20 minutes after the murder. What do you make of that? Oldenshaw, if you wish to play Sherlock Holmes, do so by all means, but to kindly allow me to concentrate on more scientific approach. Oh, dear. You look like a harassed chef, Demac, whose souffle hasn't risen to the occasion. I wonder if money is the motive. Mrs. Hewitt might have decided to sell the process to another firm. That missing gun worries me. Kettle's boiling. Oh, thank you. Yes, another visit by Oliver to console the widow, perhaps. This time he must ask some more pertinent questions. About that drive in the country and the missing gun. Margaret, you're a darling to keep me company. But why all the questions? What does it matter if I did go out last night? Well, my dear, in a place as small as Marlow, somebody's going to drop a word to the police that your car was collected near that club. And they're going to wonder why you chose not to tell them. It's not a very pleasant prospect to have to tell the whole world that your marriage is a failure and that you love someone enough to chase them halfway across the countryside. I just couldn't see how telling the police I went out last night would help matters. Well, you know what they are. They do so like to know everything. They may feel, for example, that you only hung on to Alec and your marriage because of the security it offered. 
Well, that's nonsense. My own income was more than enough. It was the children. And my pride. You know, Alec tried to make things up with me last night. But habit's a terrible thing. I snapped back at him without even thinking. So he went off to the club. I took the car and went after him. But why? Why in particular last night? I don't know. One doesn't think at times like that. You just do things. I... I suppose I thought I could perhaps patch things up if I could just talk to him for a little while. Then just before I reached the club, the rest... Blessed car broke down. Well, that was that. I'd... I'd had enough. I felt like crying. And so you walked on to the club? No. No, the cold night air rather deflated me. I rang the garage, they were shut, so I phoned for a taxi. But where did you phone from? Was there a call box handy? No. No, I left the car and I walked to the first house with a telephone. I marched in looking like something from another world, plonked myself down and waited till the taxi came to fetch me. Well, that seems a pretty watertight alibi. Except, of course, for the gun. Alibi? Gun? What do you mean? Alec was killed with a point three eight. Don't you think it would be wiser if I took care of it? Marcus, what are you talking about? The gun that someone took out of Alec's desk. Alec's gun? Well, it, it's still there. Yes, there it is. Oh, Marcus, it's gone. Thank you, Marcus, invaluable. Home cooking better than the steakhouse? Good. Thank you very much. So that eliminates Mrs. Hewitt. She has an unshakable alibi, apparently. Pity. Which leaves me with Miss Lee, a less likely murder suspect I have never come across. How are you doing? Stuck. Where's formula? Where's appendix 4F? I can't get on without it. We've got all the papers from his laboratory in his home. Where else could he have left them? Miss Lee's flat? He might have combined pleasure with business. Thank you, Oldenshaw. You have a point. Do you think Oliver can stand the pace? Get that grocer in Piccadilly to send him a hamper. On the head. Yes, at once and quickly, please. My number's Cunningham 5101. Goodbye. Mr. Oliver? Mr. Oliver, wake up. The ambulance will be here in a minute. Mr. Oliver, are you all right? Oh, you poor dear, quite dead to the world. Dead? Oh, my God, don't say I've killed him. Oh, please, please say you're not dead. Oh. Oh, thank heaven for that. Now what? Oh. Water. Mm. Oh. Here. Drink this. What vintage? Today's fresh from the tap. Oh, water. It's just not my day, is it? But what on earth happened? Oh, I remember. Miss Lee, someone tried to crack my skull. Uh, Mr. Oliver. Shh. Yes, but let me Wait a explain, minute. you see. He may still be here. Uh, Mr. Oliver. Get back. Mr. Oliver. Shh. You are marvellous. What was you? I hit you on the head. You did? Yes, I'm most awfully sorry. I wouldn't have hurt you for the world, but I didn't know it was you, did I? I just heard those frightfully suspicious noises outside, and when the door opened, I'm afraid I just panicked. And there you are. 
Or rather, there you were. Well, you certainly did a splendid job. Well, thank heavens I'd used half the bath salts. It could have been much worse. <laughs> I see. Could I have something a little more, um... Oh, yes, of course. Whiskey. Thank you. I owe you that much, at least. Oh, not at all. It was entirely my fault for blundering in on you. Clumsy of me. Very clumsy. Oh. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, that's better. Aren't you joining me? Oh, not just now, thank you. Can I press you to a bonbon? Oh, thank you. You must be wondering what the dickens I'm doing here. No, really. But of course you are, inexcusable. Have another. The fact is, I've been doing some work with Alec recently, and there were some papers he wanted to let me have a look at in connection with his new invention. These really are rather delicious, don't you agree? Well, I wondered if he brought any papers here. I say that's rather tactless of me, isn't it? And you must have had a frightful day. Oh, not really. You see, I knew I was never going to see Alec again. You knew? Yes. I was very fond of him. I loved him in a lot of ways, but I had to leave him and it had to be a complete break. You know, in a strange way, his death doesn't really seem to have made any difference. Ah, but such a waste. All that fascinating work ahead of him. Oh, it was his work you came to see me about, wasn't it? The flat used to be littered with papers. Well, I really don't want to give you any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. There's a case full of it here. I was going to send it to him. It's of no use to me. Well, if you're quite sure, it'll be such a help. Oh, I see. You're expecting someone. How very thoughtless of me. Oh, on the contrary, Mr. Oliver, I rather think it's for you. For me? Yes, I uh, took the liberty of arranging some transport for you. Oh, how very kind of you. Thank you very much. Oh, transport, eh? Uh, is this the gentleman, miss? Uh, yes, it is, but I rather think he's better now. Oh, you can't be too certain, miss. Delayed concussion, very dangerous. Delayed concussion? Goodbye, my dear. Take me to Gourmet Limited. They'll know what to do. Marcus may work slowly, but he gets there in the end. I think this is what you're missing, don't I? Oh, splendid. Now we should have everything. You don't mind my being here, do you? Do you I, I just want to be in at the kill, as it were. Oh, not at all, Sir Jeffrey. It's a delight. Poor Oliver. He has been suffering in the cause of duty. Oh, good, uh, good. Apparently, Miss Lee saw fit to hit him over the head with a blunt instrument. Well, I know how did he get hold of you? It's papers. Miss Lee gave them to him. Yes, I concede the uh, improbability, but it's true. Having ministered to the bump on his head, she handed them over without demur. Yeah, that means... That yes, it does. It means she has no idea of their true value. Then it follows... Yes, of course. It follows that I am now rather short of suspects. What about the American, Drew? Hmm. That'll all depend on the success of my experiments, won't it? Oh, good man, Dimacare. You close to cracking it? Yes, it's a relatively straightforward process. Chemically ingenious, but... Uh, spare us the lecture, Dimmock. We simply want to know, is Hewitt's formula workable? Yes, almost certainly. We shall know in a minute or two. Splendid. You'll let me have a report, won't you, Dimmock? Uh, of course. Oh, oh I say, I'm slightly sorry. Something's just uh, gone. Dimmock, it exploded. It, it didn't work. Oh, bizarre. The failure. Nonsense. Hey, the uh, you have set me hot oh, on the... My God! Where's the Jeffrey? Oh, 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 yeah. Here, there we are. Oh, oh. 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 Oh.
Oh, poor Marcus. He must be losing weight in our service. That will not hurt him. Oh, is this what you want? Ah, yes, the fact that I found it. See, you couldn't find a magnifying glass among all that pretty too, could you? It might come in handy. Thank you. Do you mind, old chap? This is a rather complicated calculation. I'll be out of here in about 20 minutes. Police, sir. Doing a splendid job. Forgive my vulgar curiosity, but could you tell me what you're doing in here? I'm doing my utmost to work out a very exacting formula. I wonder if you could let us know, sir, what authority you have to be here. I'm afraid I can't do that, officer. It's extremely hush-hush and all that, you know. However, if there's any help to you, my name is Oliver. Marcus Oliver. I'm afraid I shall want more than that as an identification. Well, I haven't got a driving license or anything like that. But if you care to get in touch with Gourmet Limited, I think they'll vouch for me. I have an account there, you know, for caviar, reindeer cheese, the usual little odds and ends. I'm afraid I must ask you to come along with us, sir. But look, I told you, Gourmet Limited will vouch for me. Just give them a ring. I tell you what, sir. We'll give them a ring from the station. Police station? You want me to go there now? If you don't mind, sir. Yes, but what about food? I'm starving. I will give you a nice cup of tea and a sandwich in the canteen, sir. Really, Mr. Jeffrey? Yes? Yes? Splendid. Apparently, Oliver found nothing, but was discovered red-handed by Sir Jeffrey's chaps and flung into jail. Well done. Let's leave him there. Leave him there. No, we always disclaim our agents when they get into trouble. Goodbye. Ah, goodness. Hewitt was heavily insured. Now, a quick call to the Buckinghamshire police. Tell them all they require is a, uh, an electromagnet and a fishing rod. Suicide, eh? Remarkable. Now, uh, remind me uh, how we worked it out. It was a combination of my research and Oldenshaw's more conventional method. Yes, I know about that, but uh, how did he do it? He tied a weight to a piece of string and tied the other end to the butt of his revolver. As he shot himself, the gun was pulled out of his hand and fell into the water. The scratch marks made by the gun as it fell over the side are clearly shown here in this beautiful police photograph for which we are eternally grateful. Oh, quite so. Uh, yes, I see that. But why did he go to all that trouble to make it look like murder? Guess. 
Life insurance policies. Of course. They don't pay up on suicide. Splendid, Norton. We'll make a policeman of you yet. Poor Hewitt. What else could he do? His marriage was finished. His mistress had rejected him. His debts were enormous, and on top of it all, he realized that his process was valueless. He wanted to provide for his children. Well, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I must take our solution along to the yard. They'll be expecting it. As I often point out to my subordinates, good police work is always a collaboration. <laughs> oh, he hasn't read his Sherlock Holmes, has he, Oldenshaw? <laughs> I am nothing if not eclectic, Demark. I must apologize for my earlier tetchiness about your experiments. Oh, not at all. It's I who should apologize, making all those stink. Yes? Really? Uh, just a moment. It's the Ministry. That American, Drew, has offered a million dollars for the late Mr. Hewitt's process. Tell them to take it. <laughs> Except... Ha, 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 ha.